In our last video lecture, we discussed four function operations. In this lesson, I am going to discuss the fifth function operation, and that is composition of functions. Suppose that we're given two functions f and g. The composite function f circle g is defined to be f circle g of x. We can visualize this as follows. Whenever you're given f circle g of x, you put the input x under the function g. So when it comes out, it will now become g of x. And this g of x, this will be your input for the function f. So therefore, when it comes out of the function f, the name is now f of g of x. Let me illustrate this as follows. Suppose that f of x is 2x squared minus 3 and g of x is equal to 4x. Let us find f circle g of 1. So by definition, this is f of g of 1. Let me first compute my g of 1. g of 1 here is equal to 4 times 1. So therefore, this is equal to 4. 4 is now my input for f because g of 1 is equal to 4 there. What is f of 4? f of 4 is 2 times 4 squared minus 3 and this is equal to 29. Next, let us compute g circle f of 1. This is g of f of 1. This means we have to compute f of 1 first. What is f of 1? It's equal to 2 times 1 squared minus 3. That's 2 minus 3, negative 1. I will now plug that in. I will replace negative 1 for f of 1 here. So I'm just calculating g of negative 1. So that's 4 times negative 1 is equal to negative 4. Notice here that composition of functions is not commutative. g circle f is not the same as the function f circle g. Here are some more examples. Take note that we can get the composition of f with itself. This is f of f of negative 2. f of negative 2 is 2 times negative 2 squared minus 3. So this is 2 times 4 minus 3, which is equal to 5. We now know the value of f of negative 2. I will replace f of negative 2 by 5. f of 5 is... 2 times 5 squared minus 3, and this is 25 times 2 is 50 minus 3, that's 47. Next, let us get g circle g of negative 1. This is g of g of negative 1. g of negative 1 is 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. We now replace g of negative 1 by negative 4. So I now have g of negative 4. g of negative 4 is 4 times negative 4. This is equal to negative 16. In this example, we're given a table of values and we want to evaluate each expression. So let's start with f circle g of 1. f circle g of 1 is f of g of 1 from our row for g and then get x is equal to 1. There you go. So g of 1 is 0. f of 0, this is the row for f and then when x is 0, the value of f of x is negative 1. Next, f circle g of negative 1, we have g of negative 1 is 0. And we already knew earlier that f of 0 is negative 1. Next, g circle f of negative 1 is defined to be g of f of negative 1. f of negative 1 is equal to negative 3. This is now g. And lastly, g of negative 3 is equal to 8. g circle f of 0 is g of f of 0. Let's look at 
the row for f of x, and then 0 here. When x is equal to 0, this is your f of 0. f of 0 is negative 1. And from here, looking at the row for g, g of negative 1 is equal to 0. Next, we have g circle g of negative 2, that is g of g of negative 2. First, g of negative 2 is equal to 3. And g of 3, I'm looking at g, and then 3 here, that's equal to 8. Next, f circle f of negative 1. This is f of f of negative 1. From our row for f, f of negative 1, that's equal to negative 3. And then f of negative 3 for f, and then negative 3, that's negative 7. Next, we're given the graph of two functions, f and g, and we will evaluate these expressions g circle f of 1 is g of f of 1. What is the meaning of f of 1? This is the y coordinate when x is equal to 1. This is your graph for f of x. And let's see, when x is equal to 1, there you go. This is the point 1, negative 1. The y coordinate is negative 1. This is your f of 1. So therefore, this is g of my f of 1 is equal to negative 1. And then, let's evaluate g of negative 1. For g of negative 1, this is the y coordinate when x is equal to negative 1. But this time, we are looking at the graph of g. When x is negative 1, there you go. This is the point 1, 3. So this 3 over here is your g of negative 1. So this is equal to 3. Next, g circle f of 5. This is g of f of 5. What is f of 5? Let's look at f and the value when x is equal to 5. This is 5. The y coordinate is equal to 1. 1 is your f of 5. This is g of 1. Lastly, g of 1, let's look at the function, the graph g. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 4. Next, f circle g of 0 is f of g of 0. Let's look at the graph of g. We want to get the x coordinate when y is equal to 0. This is the graph G. When X is equal to 0, this point, what is the Y coordinate? That is equal to 5. G of 0 is 5. And F of 5, we already evaluated it before that F of 5 is equal to 1. Next, F circle G of 2 is F of g of 2 g of 2 where is my g here is g and when x is equal to 2 this this point your y is equal to 2 and f of 2 this is my f when x is equal to 2 your y is negative 2. now suppose that we're given f of x to be equal to 2x squared minus 3x and g of x is equal to 4x we want to find the following f circle g of x by definition this is f of g of x i will replace g of x by 4x therefore we are looking for f of 4x you remember our strategy in our previous video lecture what I will do is we will write f of x as f of, instead of star, I will be using box. This is equal to 2 box squared minus 3. But this time around, we want box to be equal to 4x. So I will put 
4x here, 4x here. Hence, this is equal to, my f of 4x is equal to, uh, let me just write that, the entire 4x squared multiplied to 2 minus 3. So this is equal to 2 times 16x squared minus 3. This is equal to 32x squared minus 3. Next, let's evaluate G circle F of X. This is G of F of X. I will replace F of X by 2X squared minus 3. F of X is 2X squared minus 3. Solving for G of 2X squared minus 3, I will write G of box is equal to from here g of x is equal to 4x so g of box is 4 times box but this time around we want the box to be equal to 2x squared minus 3 this is 2x squared minus 3 so therefore this is equal to 4 let me just copy that 4 times the entire 2x squared minus 3 so this is 8x squared minus 12. Now what we want to do here is to find the domain of F circle G. To get the domain of F circle G, you have to get the function F circle G of X. And this is what we call the answer. You have to get the domain of that. But you have to get the intersection of this one with the domain of G. Why do we want this one? Because in the first place, you have to put x inside the function g. So that means x should be inside the function g. To illustrate, let us find the domain of the following, f circle g and g circle f. So let us start with f circle g. So first, you have to compute for f circle g of x. Take note, class, that in getting the domain of f circle g, you really have to perform the operation. Unlike for f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f over g, you can get the domain of this without calculating what these functions are. All you have to do for the first three is that, get the domains of the intersection, and then for the fourth one, you still get the intersection of the two domains, but you take away the values which would make the denominator equal to 0. However, for this case, for F circle G, you really have to compute what F circle G is. Let us compute F circle G of X. This is F of G of X. I will replace G of X by X over X minus 1. We have X over x minus 1. I just replace g of x by x over x minus 1. Let me put my f of box here as a guide. Since f of x is 1 over x plus 2, f of box is 1 over box plus 2. Therefore, f of x over x minus 1, we just put x over x minus 1 here. So therefore, this is 1 all over x over x minus 1 plus 2. Let us simplify this complex fraction. Let's turn the denominator into a single fraction first. You have the LCD of x minus 1. The numerator is x plus 2 times quantity x minus 1. So therefore, that is 1 all over 3x minus 2 divided by x minus 1. And this is 1 times division becomes multiplication. Get the reciprocal of the denominator. Therefore, this is just x minus 1 all over 3x minus 2. What is now the domain of the answer? So domain of answer is equal to all reals, but you take away the values which would make your denominator equal to zero. This will be equal to zero when x is equal to two-thirds. 
but you have to get the intersection with the domain of the inner function. The inner function here is g. What is the domain of g? It's the set of real numbers. Take away 1 because you have a denominator of x minus 1. Therefore, the domain of f circle g is the intersection of these two sets. This is just a set of all real numbers. You just take away both 2 thirds and 1. This time around, let us compute for the domain of g circle f. We have to compute first g circle f of x. This is g of f of x, and I will replace f of x by 1 over x plus 2. Since we are evaluating g of 1 over x plus 2, let me just write my g of box here as box all over box minus 1 from here. Therefore, g of 1 over x plus 2, I will put 1 over x plus 2 here for box. So that's 1 over x plus 2 all over 1 over x plus 2 minus 1. Let us evaluate this complex fraction. The denominator is x plus 2. The numerator is 1 minus the entire x plus 2. This is, let me just copy the numerator 1 over x plus 2. This is negative 1 minus x all over x plus 2. Copy the numerator, which is 1 over x plus 2. Change division to multiplication and get the reciprocal of this one. So that's x plus 2 all over negative 1 minus x. Hence, x plus 2 gets cancelled out. We are left with 1 over negative 1 minus x. Take note that I can put the negative here in the numerator and this is just 1 plus x. Hence, what is now the domain of negative 1 over 1 plus x? That's domain of answer. That's equal to all reals except negative 1. Because the denominator will be equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 1. But you have to get the intersection with what? What is the inner function? The inner function here is f of x. We'll get the domain of f and that is just a set of real numbers. Take away negative 2. Hence, the domain of G circle F is the intersection of these two sets, which is the set of all reals, but you have to take away both negative 1 and negative 2. Another example, we have these two functions. Let us find the domain of these two functions, F circle G and G circle F. Let us start with f circle g. f circle g of x is f of g of x. And g of x is equal to x minus 6. By now, you should be able to evaluate f of x minus 6. This is your box. Replace this by box. So this is square root of x minus 6. This is your answer. What is now the domain of your answer? Since you have a square root sign, you have to set the radicand to be greater than or equal to 0. So we have x minus 6 greater than or equal to 0, which means that x is greater than or equal to 6. Then let us get the domain of the inner function. The inner function is g. What is g? The domain of G is the set of all real numbers. You have no restrictions for x minus 6. So therefore, the domain of F circle G is the intersection of these two. And the intersection is just this one, x greater than or equal to 6, or in interval notation, that is 6 up to infinity. Let us get the domain of G circle F. 
first let us compute g circle f of x this is g of f of x f of x is square root of x what is g of square root of x you can just replace x here by square root of x this becomes square root of x minus 6. what is the domain of square root of x minus 6 you have a square root sign here, so therefore you just set the radicand to be greater than or equal to zero. Then get the domain of the innermost function, which is f. What is the domain of f? Set the radicand to be greater than or equal to zero. So that's x greater than or equal to zero as well. So the domain of g circle f is the intersection of these two, which is the set itself, which is 0 up to infinity. For our last example, we have f of x equals x squared minus 1 and g of x is equal to x squared minus 4. Let us start with the domain of f circle g. Let's compute f circle g of x. This is f of g of x and g of x is square root of x squared minus 4. What is f of square root of x squared minus 4? Put square root of x squared minus 4 inside the box. We will have the square of the square root of x squared minus 4 minus 1. So this is x squared minus 4 minus 1 and that's equal to x squared minus 5. What is the domain of x squared minus 5? You have no radical sign, you have no denominators, so therefore you have no restrictions. It's just the set of real numbers. However, the domain of the inner function, the inner function is g. What is the domain of g? We set x squared minus 4 to be greater than or equal to 0. We have already solved this inequality in our previous video lecture. You can check that. This turns out to be the set negative infinity to negative 2 union 2 to positive infinity. Hence, the domain of f circle g is equal to the intersection of these two sets, which is this set negative infinity, negative 2 union 2 to infinity. So this is a good example to really illustrate that you do not just get the domain of the answer because if you just look at x squared minus 5, it's as if we can plug in anything. If you use f circle g of let's say 0, if you just use x squared minus 5, you will think that it's equal to 0 squared minus 5. However, this is not the case since the definition of f circle g of 0 is f of g of 0. But the problem with that is that g of 0 is not a real number. This one here, g of 0 is not a real number. So therefore, that means we have no input for f. So that's why this entire thing does not exist. You have no value for f of g of 0.